It's a beautiful day out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke Torgerson is joining me as well today, and we're so glad to have this opportunity to just uh, speak our hearts and uh, and really talk about God's heart and how He cares about each one of us and what He's doing in our lives and uh, the good and great and loving God that He really is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. Um, I actually just got back from a trip to the Boundary Waters uh, last night, late last night. I was uh, there with uh, two other guys, and we brought five of our kids, five of our boys. My son, uh, Gabe, and my sons, Gabe and Micah. Gabe's 10, Micah's 7. Um, Jim's sons are Miles and, and Graham, and they're 12 and 9. And then uh, Mike's son was uh, Brooks, and he's a 10-year-old as well. And uh, so we had five boys along on this trip, and we went to the Boundary Waters, which is along the um, border of northern Minnesota, and um, right between uh, on the border with Canada. And uh, it's just these beautiful lakes where you go canoeing to these lakes. No, no motors are allowed, and you find these kind of campsites um, they're kind of designated for you, but you find these campsites out there and you go canoeing to them and you spend these days um, out on these campsites and it's spectacular. Luke has actually been on a Boundary Waters trip with me. And Unforgettable. <laughs> Unforgettable. Unforgettable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we were just talking about how, because I just got back from Beaver Lake um, with my family mm -hmm. and you just forget how much nature recharges you. Yes, yes. And, you know, everybody talks about what's the most healthy, what's the most optimal. Everybody's into age extension, right? right? Yeah. And um, I think the, the, the most simple thing is to just trust God that he made it right mm -hmm. and to do it as close to the Garden of Eden as possible. Right. Eat whole, raw fruits and veggies, you know, make sure you know where your food is coming from, don't eat pesticides, and get your body in nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's an inexplicable burst of energy right. that you get when you're just surrounded by that fresh air, surrounded by God's creation that you just can't replicate with concrete under your feet and, you know, sanitized, uh, sanitized rooms and houses. And yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it is interesting because <laughs> we, you, you know, you, 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 that's how you're cooking. You're eating over this campfire. And, uh, but I tell you what, the food made over a campfire, <sighs> there, there's something about it. Like, yep. I mean, when you're in that kind of a setting with nature and you're cooking something over the campfire, you smell like smoke, um, but there's something about it where I don't know that I've ever tasted a better meal than just a simple meal over a campfire. I asked my boys, what was your favorite meal? And they said pancakes. We had pancakes twice <sighs> in the morning. And of course, these pancakes, you know, <laughs> when you think about pancakes cooked over a campfire, there's ash in there, you know. It is not like this, like, beautiful, like, you know, picture-perfect pancake, but it's the real deal, you know. And and they love the pancakes. And, and I was also kind of thinking, you know, uh, we, we on the way home from uh, northern Minnesota yesterday, we stopped and had pizza, and uh, there was an ant crawling over the pizza. And... I, I just made a comment to uh, one of the other guys. I'm like, boy, after being in the Boundary Waters, an ant crawling over pizza is no big deal. <laughs> you know? Not even an issue. Yeah. Not even an issue. Get, hopefully he doesn't crawl off before I bite him. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, there is, like, you're walking around. Your feet are bare. Yeah. You know, you're walking through the mud uh, uh, or through the dirt. Um, you know, you're, you're, it rains. You know, yes. it, it rained for a good 24 hours, yes. you know. And so... But there's this camaraderie. There's this like life giving of being out in the elements and and beating the elements and and also just immersing yourself in the elements. Mm -hmm. And and you know you go swimming. That's how you take a bath. You go swimming. Mm -hmm. You know, or it's just it's great. And uh, uh, I have so many memories just from that one Boundary Waters trip that we took together. And. Um, you know, you could write story upon story. You should write a book, holy moly, about your wilderness about adventures, the, 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 your close calls, <laughs> your avalanches that almost shoved you over the cliff. Like, holy, you are an experienced outdoorsman. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. He, he, he's giving me too much credit. But on our particular Boundary Water trip, we did have some, uh, we some had, craziness. We had some craziness. <laughs> but, you know, it's not even so much that I remember. Uh at the time, the pain is what you remember the most. Right. You know, yeah. the pain between your shoulder blades 
canoeing against the wind. We we jumped off a cliff. We tell this story all the time. Right, we do. You yeah. bruised your toe, tailbone, possibly broke your tailbone. Right. Pro- yep. Yeah, pro- yeah. I uh, tore a meniscus, my meniscus, my ligament. Incredible pain. They had to come in and, and grab me because uh, I just couldn't do the canoe trip. But, you know, through that tearing of the meniscus, um, there's something about the process of pain that is a refiner's fire. Right, yeah. And our our walk with God is going to be peaceful and restful, but it is not lacking pain. Right. It is not lacking pain. Yeah, yeah. And pain is like that ever-present thing. And the cool part is... Um, I have a story where I, I went into the doctor and right after we were supposed to do it, uh, we right went, came waters, back right? from yeah. the boundary waters, went into the doctor. He told me, you need surgery right away on your meniscus, right away. And I said, well, I'm going down to Nashville to record an album and I just don't want to have surgery before I go down there. So I asked for so much prayer and healing. I went online. I just said, please send me your prayers, send me your healing, um, and I had so many, you prayed for my knee. Mm-hmm. Multiple, multiple people prayed for my knee. I also took a crazy amount of vitamins, mm-hmm. um, some high powered antioxidants and glucosamine. I really believe in vitamins. We're on a high power regimen. But when I went in for my pre-operation um, consultation with Dr. Jewel, Jewel, he actually goes to our church, Jewelson. Yep, yep. Uh, He said, he looked at the nurse and was like, can you double check and make sure this is the right scan? <laughs> and she did. And he's like, your knee's fine. There's nothing wrong with your There's knee. And I'm like, Ooh, I took a lot of vitamins. And he was like, well, that's not it. Vitamins don't do anything for you. And I was like, I prayed a lot. And he's like, well, you know, sometimes things are just weird. And it's like, oh, ye of little faith. Uh, but I'm sure he sees a lot of weird things. But to me, in my heart, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord healed me. Right. And yeah. he never could have done it. Unless you were like, Luke, you see that cliff up there? What do you think <laughs> yeah. about jumping off that bad boy? Well, you know, there is that. Okay, so, so you know, you say we have a, a, all these experiences in the Boundary Waters. So what actually happened is in the Boundary Waters, there's these rock outcroppings, these rock cliffs. And part of, part of the experience of it is you see these cliffs and you always make sure that the water is deep enough where you know you're not going to hit a rock and stuff like that. Right. So you are right. taking these precautions. Yes. Um, so it's not just pure risk. Right. In other words, you're we not swam being down. right. Swam down. Made sure there was no rocks. Made sure it was deep enough. But this was a pretty high cliff, and uh, I, I'm guessing it was what at least probably 60 feet. Maybe, yeah, 60 75 feet. when I tell the story. 75 when you tell the story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but really. Um, when you talk about creating memories, mm-hmm. and also this is something where I've learned that following God, um, he, he he doesn't call us to fear. Mm. In fact, like you hear again and again in the scriptures, be strong and courageous. Now, this doesn't mean that you just unnecessarily take risks. We have the example of Jesus where the devil was tempting him and saying, you know, jump off this, jump off this cliff or jump off this temple. Yes. And the, God said that the angels will come and protect you. And, and Jesus says, well, in scripture, it also says, do not tempt the Lord your God. Mm-hmm. Right. So we have this balance of we say, mm-hmm. OK, I'm not going to do things that tempt the, the Lord my God. But I'm also not going to be afraid mm. of adventure. I'm not going to be afraid to try things and yeah. say, hey, let's try this and let's see how this goes, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, in that particular situation, <laughs> after, that, after that situation, I decided I'm not going to jump off any 60-foot cliffs um, unless I have a really good reason to. <laughs> unless the Lord calls me, the, the clouds open, and his right. voice comes yeah. up. Yeah, same for me. And, and to preface that, and to preface that, I had, two years earlier, I had jumped off probably an 80 or 90 foot cliff, and it was totally perfect. No problems. Right, no problems whatsoever. It was See, so still. The water was so still. Well, that's what I kind of right? wonder. Like, if the water was so still that it, yeah. that it made the impact a little bit harder. A little bit harder. Because I know that before when I jumped off the 80-footer, like, it was, the I mean, there was some pretty big waves. Right. So I wonder if that wasn't one of the factors. Yeah. But at the same time, do I, you know, people say, well, Sam, are you are you a risk taker? Sure. You know, and, and you have to kind of balance it out because... Um, even with this, even with this trip to the Boundary Waters with with all of our kids, I'm sorry. There's always risk involved. Oh, yeah. But the very fact that you get in your vehicle 
where most accidents happen and most deaths happen every single time you get into your vehicle, it's a risk. Yes. It's an absolute risk. And God, I, I think that God, he's, he's so good and he protects us. And he says, you know what? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take the next step. Mm. Don't be afraid to say, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to go on an adventure. I'm going to take my kids on an adventure because this life is meant to be an adventure. Mm. And it's meant to have risk. And it's meant to say, hey, I'm, I'm taking, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the factors, the things that I know about right now, mm. but I'm willing to do this because ultimately I know that the Lord is with me. Mm. And yeah, I'm not going to tempt the Lord my God, but I'm going to do this because he also says, don't be afraid, mm. be strong, be courageous mm. for the Lord your God is with you. And that is so cool that from that experience, you have this story, this story of God's healing and impact in your life. Yes. That's incredible. Yes. Yeah. I've held on to it for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, a miracle can really strengthen your faith in incredible, incredible ways. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the power of God is real and tangible. And I just think that there's so much goodness that we don't even know yet. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, we become so familiar with our faith that it becomes difficult to step out into the, out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, how do you keep a, how do you keep a freshness to the Lord's voice at the same time as keeping a consistency to your life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It almost seems yeah. like they push and pull at each other. They do. And I think that's just like any other, any relationship. Mm -hmm. There's always in relationships, it's never static. Yes. You know, it's always a, a give and take, a push and pull. Mm -hmm. And uh, really this brings us to our scripture today, which is Micah 6, 8. And um, which is one of my life verses. My wife would say I have tons of life verses, yeah. and that's good. Yeah. But uh, Micah 6, 8, it says, He has shown you, O mortal or O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Very simple verse. I'm going to be preaching about it this Sunday um, and really talking about being released and re being released to, to, to do that, to, to live justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And, and kind of, you know, I like that because it's a very kind of simple verse of, of what life is about. Mm -hmm. To do justly, to, tr to try to live the best way that we possibly can. To love mercy, to receive that mercy from God mm -hmm. and say, you know what? I've been forgiven so much. I'm, I mean, I look at my life sometimes and I'm like, Lord, you have forgiven me so much. Oh, yeah. And yet to be able to also extend that mercy to the people around you, mm -hmm. you know, and then to walk humbly with your God and just say, Lord, I don't have all the answers, mm. but I, I just know <laughs> I need you. Yes. Well, it's so simple. It's so much about the fundamentals, mm -hmm. like every sport, mm -hmm. every technique, every lifestyle, every job. It's not about the flashy stuff. It's about the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Heaven and earth will pass away, but these three things will remain. Faith hope and love and it's so hard to remember to follow through on the basketball shot it's so hard to remember the exact technique of bowmanship and practice it every time but if every day we orient our whole being mm -hmm. around just the simplicity yes of of submitting to his uh, submitting our deeds to him and our plans will succeed yes but it's not easy, right? Because all of a sudden, to love mercy. Mm -hmm. It can be hard to accept his mercy. It can be hard. I almost see it as grace. Would you see mercy and grace being similar? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Somebody once told me that grace is energy. Mm -hmm. And so lately, I've been praying to the Lord, like when my kids are really getting at me, and like, Lord, give me grace for this. Right. Because yeah. I just don't have the energy anymore. Yeah. And sometimes the Lord will take grace away from a project where you're like, I don't have energy for this project anymore. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he'll give grace where it's all of a sudden like, I have so much energy to wake up at 5.30 a.m. and get after this project. And it's tough to follow that. It's tough, it's tough to find that grace. Because I think first it is a grace for yourself. Because people, you know, sometimes I'll say that I struggle with anger. I right. do. I right. struggle with anger. Right. And that's just the truth. Yeah. And people are like, what? You're so chill. And it's like, well, not at you, but at me. 
Mm -hmm. Like I get so angry at myself when I do things wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to accept that forgiveness and not uh, put a hole in the garage door right. <laughs> with yeah. my foot because yeah. I get angry. Well, and even as you say that, you know, we look at the Apostle Paul and he talks, he talks about weakness. Mm -hmm. And when you get angry at yourself or your own weakness or your failings or whatever it is, mm -hmm. I think that is our, that's our natural reaction. Mm. But then you have God's promise to Paul saying, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm. You know, and, and he's, he's like, in your weakness, I am made strong. Mm. And so obviously like that anger that you have towards yourself or towards a situation or whatever, God's saying, I'm going to work through this. Wow. I'm going to work through your, your weakness and my grace is sufficient for you. Wow. Yeah. Which is so good. <laughs> ah. That's such a good word. You know, I, I've kind of been getting into prayer visions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just like if you pray and ask the Lord to give you images of what he's trying to tell you, it can be a really effective way of communicating with him. And I remember I was praying and he showed me this island, this desert island where I was just sitting on the beach meditating. Because for a while in my life, when I was gone from charity, gone from church, and honestly not living the way the Lord wanted me to, I got really into meditating. Because mm -hmm. it's a pathway to peace, mm -hmm. and, it, and it does work. But it's the first step in prayer mm. to empty yourself, and then the desire is for something to fill you. Right. And meditation without prayer is just emptiness, mm. which can help if you're chaotic, but it's not actually going to fix the root issue. And I saw myself on this beach meditating, and I saw across the land, across the waterway was this beautiful, lush landscape flowing with milk and honey, just like the Bible would, you'd think of the promised land. Right. And I looked in the ocean and there were just sea serpents mm. and like sharks and like Leviathan, the nine headed Leviathan. Right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't go in there. And I remember the Lord coming down almost like, you know, the angel of the Lord, which could be seen as Jesus wisdom. Um, and he showed me that these are your emotions that you have not submitted to me. Mm. And your whole emotional state is angry or sad or whatever because your passion is misplaced. Like the Lord wants to use your anger and call it passion. Because mm. what do you do when you get, somebody blocks your goal, a goal that you're passionate about? Right. You get angry. You get angry. Right. Or you get a holy, righteous mm -hmm. passion. Right. Or, or sadness. Like you're using sadness as some sort of comfort like poor me victimhood when in, in truth sadness is the Lord showing you what hurts his heart mm. and then to feel that and repent. Right. Right. Yeah. And he showed me that all of these creatures that were keeping me from the promised land were actually my rides to the promised land. Mm. If I could just submit myself and repent and seek his face, all of a sudden these monsters would become my friends. And, and it was an amazing revelation to me that my anger is not wrong. Right. My my sex drive is not wrong. Right. My sadness is not wrong. But unless everything is submitted to the Lord and given to his purpose and his plan, it will always blow up. It will bite us. It will the things that were made for our success will turn into our failure if right. it's not committed to the Lord. Gosh. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's a beautiful vision. And and I hold to it. And, and what I like too, Luke, is when you say that, even in the midst of a period of, of your life where you would say that you were struggling to even know God or, or walk with him. God used even that. He was there. And he was there. He wanted to, he wanted to tickle my ear. <laughs> right. He wanted to give me divine revelations. Yeah. And if, yeah, it's just so cool. The way that the Lord seeks us, the way he leaves the 99 mm -hmm. and finds that one lost sheep. And then how he uses our stuff. He uses our mistakes. No he doubt. uses our failures. And he oh, says, so even true. these, even these, I'm going to work for good. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's yes. where probably part of that verse, to do justly, because we don't want to experience those consequences. No. Like, God never, yeah, God, God, he forgives. He died on the cross, and he, forgi or he forgives us our sins. But he also says, you don't want to continue in your sin, because there is consequences. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. there's two plus two equals four. Sin has consequences. So live justly. Mm. And then love mercy because when we when we accept God's mercy and we trust God's mercy and then we extend that mercy to the people around us. Mm. Boy, is that good. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> you know? It's so good. And then to simply 
walk humbly with God and just say, God, I love that. I surrender all these emotions. I surrender all this stuff. Mm. I surrender. All these things that you've given me that are rides to my promised land. Mm. Lord, I walk humbly with you. You are God. I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I also, like for, for me, you know, when you mentioned those emotions, one of the emotions that I struggle with is fear. Mm -hmm. Like a fear of losing loved ones, which I think that probably most of us experience in some way. Especially like, I think when you're a parent, oh. um, you look at your child and you love your child and you're like... I do not want to experience the loss of this lo of this kid. That would be terrible. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, all of a sudden, like, I think when you have children of your own and you hear pe people's stories of the loss of their children, mm -hmm. your heart just goes out to them to say, I don't know how you made it. I don't know how you did it. And, and yet, when I do talk to people who have lost their children, God's grace was there. God's love was there. God's God's peace and His hope. Yeah, it was tough. I I, I don't think I've ever heard a parent say it was it was easy, mm -hmm. but but you know there's this sense of you know what God I even this this child that you've given me this this you know I surrender them to you too and I don't have to be fearful. You love this child more than I love them. And you're going to take care of me through the midst of this. And you're going to take care of this child through the midst of whatever you take them through. And I just don't have to have that fear, that fear of unknown circumstances, that fear of what might happen, you know. And Which is really interesting to me because I do deal with fear, and yet I love to do adventures where, <laughs> where there's bears and cliffs and, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. And, oh, uh, my goodness. Well, it's it's... When you find freedom from bondage, mm -hmm. the release is is euphoric, mm -hmm. to, to put it bluntly. Um, and if, if you struggle with fear and you put yourself in fear and, and the Lord sustains you through it, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm riding a wave. Right. I'm just on a surfboard riding this wave. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not even yeah. me. We made it through this one. <laughs> yeah. The Lord is conspiring for my good because he loves me. Yeah. And... Uh, I think it's just such a powerful, and it come, it brings me back to nature. It brings me back to nature, how it's so important for us to steward nature. Mm -hmm. Conser yeah, Con conservation. And, yep. Because animals can either be the thing that just annoys the crap out of us, like our chickens going off in the morning, or <laughs> the donkeys are particularly recalcitrant. Right. Uh, but... You know, everything is supposed to be under our authority. Right. Everything is supposed to be under the dominion of man, under the dominion of God. Yeah. And there's something beautiful about nature being ordered in the way that it's supposed to, whether it's our inner nature and our emotions or even the land. You know, mm -hmm. our greatest Christian presidents, one of their biggest platforms was conservancy, right? Yeah. Conservation. Yeah. Yeah protecting and enjoying and appreciating the beauty of God's creation. And that was another thing that Luke that always amazes me. I go to the Boundary Waters and you have this beautiful area that is kept pristine by conservation. And there is beauty everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like absolute beauty everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you know, during the summer, a lot of people go to the Boundary Waters. Mm -hmm. But there are so many beautiful places that nobody's ever seen and that nobody ever goes to and what you find out is that god he just loves beauty like he just he just absolutely is beauty wow. and and you know like even when you're looking at like we stayed on this beautiful island with all these rocks and stuff like that and there was dead trees and even when you're looking at these gnarled dead trees and you see that there is death mm. it also creates this beauty this sense of of the, the the give and take of this sense that there is this kind of life and death and it, it's working mm. together to create mm. this beauty <laughs> like mm. I mean and it is it's it, it's in a sense savage yeah. but it's also beautiful yeah. and it's not the perfect things that create all the beauty it's the intermix yeah. of the perfect and the and the and also the dead and the mm. gnarled and the things that have shown wear and tear mm. and that combination, you know. Mm. And I love um, in the Chronicles of Narnia, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, 
where they're talking about Aslan, and Aslan is this representation of Jesus Christ. He's the lion. He's the creator in, in this story. And um, Aslan, they're talking about Aslan, and, 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 and the kids are like looking at him. The, the Lucy, the main character in that particular book, she's looking at him and talking about Aslan. And they say, he's not a safe lion. You know, he's not safe, but he is good. And, and like, when you read that and, and you think about Jesus, when you think about God, you're like, yeah, he's, he is not safe. Mm. Like, in the sense of, like, he's a risk taker. Mm. He's, he's, he, God is all powerful, omnipotent. You know, <laughs> he's not safe, but he sure is good. And because he's so good and because he's so loving and because he's so kind and because he gives us so much mercy, then all of a sudden there is that sense of security in him. Yeah. Security that, yeah, it, there is this sense that he's taking care of us. He loves us. Wow. And he's with us. When you talk about death, you know, this, this thing that came into the world because of sin, mm -hmm. it seems wrong. It seems, you know, there's this natural human feeling mm -hmm. that death is just not the way God designed it, right? But in Lord of the Rings, we keep coming back to Chronicles of Narnia and Lord of the Rings because I believe, I mean, what more profound statement was said about Jesus, mm -hmm. about God, mm -hmm. than he's not safe, but he's good. Mm -hmm. Like that just, mm -hmm. that'll reverberate for generations and yeah. generations and generations. Yeah. And in, in, the creation story that Tolkien wrote, the evil God that rebelled from the the Lord, God, the Most High, tried to create, because creation is a song in, in Tolkien's world. Right. And Melkor tried to make it discordant. And he made brass and he made like these minor songs and terrible and it sounded gross. And then what the Most High did was he came in and he wove his melodies around the discordant to all of a sudden bring it back into the melody, kind of like jazz right. or whatever. Right. And I think about, I've been obsessed with the afterlife um, because everybody says there's no proof that there's an afterlife. There's no way to know. And it's like, we've got a lot of people who've died and come back. Right. And they have remarkably similar stories. Right. Yeah. So for people to say there's no knowledge of the afterlife, <laughs> right. I think is a lie of Satan right. that leads to fear and uncertainty. The truth is that the Lord allows a lot of people to die and see heaven and Death come near back death experiences. Yep. and then corroborate their yeah. stories together. And there was this lady who I was listening to who was held underwater for 10 minutes by a waterfall. She was swimming in this beautiful lake and all of a sudden this waterfall just undertowed her 10 minutes. She had this incredible experience that was just so consistent where there was a group of people who met her that went through her life and the Lord was, you know, there was a, a being of ever loving goodness saying, you messed up, but I just don't care. I love you so much. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she was told during that time that her son was going to die. In 10 years, her son was going to die. And she was like, God, why? Why would you make my little boy, because he was 12 at the time, mm -hmm. die? And he was like, do you want to go back right now? And she's like, no. He's not going to want to go back either. <laughs> right. He's going to be happy. Right. And so there's this amazing tragedy and discordance of death that just leaves us broken on earth. Right. That on the other side of, once the resolution comes, once the Lord plays his melody over death, yeah. we see that it's just the best thing that's ever happened to us. We see that it's all part of the story. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard to see it on this side. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, it's so hard to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Trust. Well, I think that probably brings us to the end of our conversation today, which has been an awesome conversation. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Uh, Luke, would you mind closing us in prayer as we... Uh, um, really thank God for his goodness in the midst of the chaos and the death and the uncertainty and the risk that he really is so good. Wow. Lord, I just can't believe how you always speak to me in the, in these moments. You tell us in Proverbs that the presence of friendship is like a sacred anointing oil that brings us into your presence. Because you, you're a triune God. You're a God of relationship. And the only way to be understood for us to understand you is in relationship. And so when I talk with Sam and spend time just in his countenance, in his presence, you just shine through so powerfully. There's just something about the communion of saints, the community of saints, mm -hmm. 
that brings to pass your presence. You release your glory and your power in relationships, but goodness gracious, they can be hard. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious, Lord. The more and more you enter that, that storehouse of friendship, the more and more Satan's trying to drag you back out. He's trying to hook you back in and say, you deserve to be alone. Nobody likes you. There's no hope for you, and you'll always be alone. And I just break that lie off of whoever's listening right now mm -hmm. that that's the case, where you have been hurt so badly. The Lord's just giving me a heart for you of how much it has hurt you. Mm -hmm. And whatever that is, whatever, whatever pain has broken you, the Lord is healing right now. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. He is giving grace. And he is revealing how the hurt is the setup mm -hmm. for the healing. Yes. Oh. And the greater the hurt, the greater the healing. Yeah. And there is no mountain. There is no hurt. There is no depths nor heights. There is no demon or angel. Neither life nor death can keep us from the power of the love of God. Yes. We just stand in that. And we thank you for it. Mm. So help us to see when, when we come upon death and brokenness and hate and, and the obvious works of the enemy, that we can just smile and rest assured that the way that the Lord is going to flip this around is just going to blow our minds. Yes, Lord Jesus. So Lord, in the midst of pain, I pray that trust and rest would give us our strength. Yes. In your holy and ever precious name. So let it be. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Luke. I appreciate those prayers. And I and for those of you who are maybe you're hurting and to understand, just like Luke said, that the hurt is the platform for the healing. Wow. Yeah. I've never thought that before. That was not me. <laughs> that was a really good statement. That was yeah. not me. <laughs> well, and, you know, just to kind of finish this off, you think about the moment of the greatest sacrifice. Mm. The moment when somebody said, I'm willing to put every single thing on the line. Mm. I mean, the moment when somebody said, I'm willing to sacrifice everything that I am mm. out of love. Mm. And when Jesus did that in the garden, and he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And he went in, in the moment of the greatest sacrifice, probably, and also the greatest pain, the greatest heaviness, the greatest fear. I mean, as he took our sins upon us, in that moment of the greatest, like, tragedy, mm. the greatest tragedy that ever hit this planet mm. was also the moment of the greatest redemption. The greatest, the greatest moment when, when Jesus, he said, I'm going to pay for it all. And, and that's, that's the story that we're all part of. And, and to think that in that moment of the, of the greatest tragedy, God said, I'm going to do the greatest good. Oh, I just have to share, Terry Sleto came up to me two weeks ago after worship. And he, you know, Terry's got a gravity, a presence right, yeah. that just like draws you in. Yeah. And he came up to me and he just put his hand on my shoulder. And in almost a whisper, he said, the faith of Jesus Christ was so great that not even three days in the grave could break it. Right. And they just left. <laughs> they just <laughs> left. And I was like, that's what I'll be Amen. thinking about. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. He's amazing. Anyway. That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, our prayer is that uh, you are experiencing God's grace and his healing in the midst of whatever you're, you're dealing with, that you would understand that he calls us, we're, we're not to be fearful. And uh, we, can, we can walk this great adventure of life that God's called us to. We don't have to be afraid. We don't take risks just for taking risks, but we also don't have to be afraid. And so as you walk today in God's grace and in his love, may you live justly. May you love mercy, and may you walk humbly with your God. Amen. Have a great day. God bless you.